What's up, y'all? Alright, so I know I promised my breastfeeding tips video like a week ago. I know I did. And you know what? Honestly, that's my bad. Let me lift this up real quick. Just a little bit. Can okay, y'all can see me. That's fine. Alright, um, like I told y'all in my last posted video. My baby has been really colicky. colicky. That wasn't a joke. He's been really cranky lately. And it's really not normal for a breastfed baby to be colicky. When I talked to my midwife and his pediatrician, they both said it was fine. It was normal. Like, it's something that happens. But, um, yeah. So, i kind of just been pushing through. But it's been a real rough week. Your girl took her braids down, though. You see that? Yeah. Dude, that's also been rough. Actually, my hair is... It's really manageable. Um, I blame that because I'm mixed. So it's easy for me to just grab some water and a brush and throw that down real quick. Um, it's nighttime, so it's looking a little rough. You see all the little hair sticking up. Hold on, just tuck that back in. Y'all need to see me that messed up. You feel me? I already dealt with that i'm also gonna do a, like a postpartum video to let y'all know like about the hair loss it's not really hair loss it's more like ha hair shedding so when it happens do not be afraid the only reason why i'm saying this is because when it happened after i had my daughter i got really really scared that all my hair was falling out and then my mom well my stepmom well not my stepmom but like my adopted mom she had told me that it was normal and it happened a couple of days ago when I took my braids down and I combed out my hair. I saw the hair coming out. My husband freaked out. He thought I was losing all my hair. He thought he was stressing me out too much. I didn't tell him until two days later. It was because postpartum because I loved all the foot rubs and stuff that I was getting. So, you know, it was cool. <laughs> it ain't right, but I was cool. All right. So welcome to my breastfeeding tips video. Yay. Okay, so as you can see right now, I'm breastfeeding little man. He's my baby. I love my baby. I'm breastfeeding my little man. And here are some tips that I do while I'm breastfeeding him. So my baby is a comfort eater when he's stressed out or when he's really, really tired or when he just wants to be up under me. He nurses. Because I'm a stay-at-home mom, I have the ability to feed on demand. I do not knock. Let me say this again i do not knock all the moms that cannot breastfeed on demand sis i get it not everybody can do it cool i'm straight with that my tips are to carry a manual pump in a cooler when you're at work pump okay pump it says pump like your life depend on it then save all your stuff in your cooler Put it off to the side. Put it in the freezer when you get home from work. Okay? It'd be like that. And then also when I'm driving and it's just me, like, and my son and, and my daughter and my husband's at work, I can't feed on demand, obviously. I don't pull over to the side of the road and hurry up and feed him real quick. I kind of just let him holler for a little bit. Then he soothes himself and then we're good. That's my number one tip. If you cannot feed on demand, do not shame yourself. It's perfectly fine. Not everybody can. There's nothing wrong with it. Doesn't make you a bad mom. It just means that you can't right now. That's all that means. All right. Um, also, when I'm feeding, I do have the boppy. I showed you guys that in my, um, what you call it? Y'all know. Okay. If you're my subscriber, you've been watching my videos, you know that my memory is just. I did the video where oh baby registry must haves takes me a minute but i get there and i showed you guys my my boppy my boppy yeah my bad little dude yeah i showed you my boppy right yes i love my boppy let me tell you why i really love my boppy though because you see okay you guys see my rocking chair i'm sitting in love this rocking chair by the way i got it from bye bye baby it even comes with a little footstool thingy that rocks with you. <laughs> Tell me something, sis. Tell me something. This thing is amazing. So my boppy, I, when I sit it down in front of me, it actually sits on the armrests 
of my um, rocking chair. I, I want to show you, but he's got my shirt lifted. Hold on. Okay, hold on. You ready? It sits on the armrest of my um, rocking chair. There's my armrest. See it? And my bobby. And it sits. So it kind of holds him level. My bad, my hands all in the camera and everything. This video is also not going to have the intro, by the way, because I'm just tired. Okay. Um, so I sit my bobby on the armrests of this chair, and then it sits him level with my chest. Even though my boobs are really big, they, they will lower for him. Well, they, they do lower for him, but um, it actually helps with me and like my back support, my shoulder support, you know, sis be having that good posture and whatnot but um it also helps with that and it makes me more comfortable when you're nursing you always want to make sure that you are comfortable like yes it's always a priority that your baby eats but if you're not comfortable then the whole feeding situation wouldn't be comfortable for him or he or she either because baby feeds off your energy so if they feel like you're uncomfortable they'll be uncomfortable if you're upset they'll be upset if you cry they'll end up crying babies feel all that don't let anybody tell you otherwise because they do so what i do is i sit it on on supports and then that's easier for us to breastfeed um when i'm laying down and he's laying in the bed with me and my husband laying down is a really good option as well the only thing that bothers me a little bit that i've had to learn how to adjust with doing is nursing from either side so when i'm laying down i sleep on sleep on hold on y'all because i'm not in my bed so you know i gotta think about it okay my bed's facing the wall this way so okay so i sleep on my left side yeah i sleep on my left side yes i'm that bad so i sleep on my left side and so when it's time for him to eat on the left side it's easier for me to feed him that way because my breast is already right there now when it's time for me to switch to my right side of course i don't turn us over because then he'd be on the edge of the bed so i end up having to curve my body a little bit you good okay so i end up having to curve my body a little bit to kind of make it easier accessible to my nipple so that he can feed on my right side. So what I suggest is if you're laying down and it's time for you, if you are a left side sleeper like I am, and you're, it's time for you to sleep, eat on your right side, what I advise is that you just tilt your body in a comfortable position, more like this, and have this hand tucked under your pillow and this hand kind of thrown over the top of your head somehow. That way you don't like smother baby, of course, so you don't throw it over the top of his face or anything or her face. His comes easy because I have a boy. But um, yeah, so you don't throw it over the top of their face. And it's easier for them to access that breast. And then you can still stay on your comfortable side. So now you are comfortable because believe me, this, this actually is a good stretching position. It feels really freaking awesome. And it's easier for baby as well so that they can eat and fall asleep. I also advise that you wear comfortable clothing always when you breastfeed. So yeah, you can be cute, believe me. I'm gonna do a video, just so y'all can see. I'm gonna do a video and I'm gonna pick about 10 outfits. I'm gonna put on all 10 outfits and I'm gonna show you what I wear regardless of the fact that I breastfeed. Then I'm gonna show you why it's easy for me to breastfeed in those outfits. I don't dress like a saint. I am a mama. This is true. I am a mom of two. I've breastfed both of my children very well. This, this is my second baby. We're going on almost three months now. He'll be three months on Saturday. I breastfed my daughter for a year. I did not compromise the things that I like to wear just so that I could breastfeed. I just made sure that the things that I wore were easily accessible to my breast, which believe me, wasn't that hard, okay? So that I can breastfeed my children. I don't dress like a saint, okay? I wear sundresses where my all my back be out. We be popping, everything be cute, okay? But I can still feed my kids. You don't have to compromise your look in order to satisfy your children's needs as well. And I'm very, very big on that. 
Happy moms are always important. You cannot make your kids happy if you're unhappy. So I'll also show you videos on what I wear. That way you can see what it is or how it is I'm still able to breastfeed and still wear the cute crap that I wear, girl, because I'm sis can slay, okay? So back to the tip. So arm under, arm over to reach the right side. Also, when I'm sitting on the couch, um, and he's having like a he has like a fit with his feet sometimes you know the babies are really active especially boys um and they get really active with their feet so when he gets to kicking a lot and like really like thrusting his legs and his everything what i tend to do is i'm oh, i would show you right now if he was not asleep but let me tell you something it's such a blessing that he's asleep right now what i do is i football hold him and they'll tell you this in the hospital. And if you have a midwife, your midwife will tell you the different ways you can breastfeed. So what I'll do is I'll cradle his head in this hand or this hand, depending on the side that I, I, I'm feeding on. And his body will be this way. And I hold him like this. And then I breastfeed. That way he's not kicking the crap out of like my sides or like my arm or whatever it is he plans on doing that day. And he's kind of like balled up and it works really good for nap time as well because they like feeling really cradled and tight without having to um, swaddle them. Especially if your child doesn't like to be swaddled because my son doesn't like to be swaddled. My daughter loved it. My son hates it. He does not like to be confined. So it really does help when it's time for nap time. I cradle his head. His body is this way. And you guys seen how long my baby is so obviously this doesn't fit his whole body so his feet kind of do tuck under right here but it's easier for me to do it that way and he falls asleep really really well um and i do that on both sides there's also the option of not having a boppy let me tell you something not everybody is fortunate to get the things that they want for their child and i get that believe me when i had my daughter i was not in the position that i am now i wasn't a homeowner i didn't have um i had a solitary room a solid solitary room i'm sorry i'm tired forgive me I had a solitary room so it was just me my daughter and my husband i didn't have a lot you know and i think that people fail to forget or fail to admit the fact that um they weren't always blessed you know things don't always just come to you you have to work for them so with our son i'm blessed the fact that me and my husband are homeowners i'm allowed to have this nursery my daughter is allowed to have her own room i'm allowed to have the things that i have now but i didn't have all those things with my daughter i made it work with what i had which is so perfect and why it is i'm so capable of telling you guys the things that you should have based on the things that aren't really a necessity like a bobby isn't a necessity when i when i was breastfeeding my daughter a pillow worked the exact same queen size king size don't matter a pillow a regular pillow lay it down in front of you boom bobby i just like the bobby because it's curved be space for my stomach you feel me when you feel like letting loose be tired of sucking it in all day it's just a lot mentally you feel me pop your works for you you understand what i'm saying so you could just take a regular size pillow even if your boppy's not accessible like sometimes my boppy's not accessible sometimes it'll be here in his nursery and we're in my room and um i have the bassinet in my room i don't know if i shared that with you guys but i have the bassinet in my room and I don't feel like getting up and walking all the way over here. That sounds so lazy. I don't feel like getting up and walking all the way into this room and grabbing this stupid pillow just so that I can go back in there just to nurse him when I have perfectly good four king size pillows surrounding me in my bed that I can use as a bobby. Makes more sense. Use a pillow. Pillows are comfortable for baby too. Bobby is a pillow. A pillow is a pillow. Boom. Works just fine. You can use that as well um quiet places when it's time for nap time or bedtime are always good uh the last video i posted giving you guys an update on the fact that he was colicky was um you heard that it hatch in the background it's not playing now i turned it off because it was just driving me insane 
it, that's just me hatch is perfect it was just driving me crazy but um the hatch is always something good when you go into a quiet place it's time for bedtime my son can sleep through anything but when it's time for bedtime it's nice to have a quiet place where there's something soft playing or something that they like like the sound of the dryer white noise a uh, babbling creek rain noises I don't care if your baby listens to Cardi B, okay? Something that makes them comfortable so they can sleep while you nurse, perfect. That's something you should do. That's always a good tip. Um, never get your baby used to quiet noises because then they'll always be used to quiet when they fall asleep. So it'll be harder to put them to sleep in a noisy area. So when my son was first born, I have a big family. I got a lot of family, y'all, and they're hovering family. I'm not complaining. I love my hovering family because I'm a hover. I hover. So when we had him the same day, I had like 20 people at my house ready to see my baby, okay? And he fell asleep just fine, and I kept the noise going because if he could sleep through the loudest noises, and y'all, I watched The Walking Dead, okay? That's my show. Love The Walking Dead. Vampire Diaries as well. I know it's been off season finale a long time ago. I'll watch it on repeat on Netflix. Don't care. He can listen to stuff like that and still fall asleep. Benefits of baby falling asleep with noises. You can still watch all your favorite shows and they be locked, they be knocked out. Um, breastfeeding hack, nipple balm. So when I had my daughter... I wanted a nipple balm. I had her at the hospital. They gave me lanolin and it was cool. The lanolin in the tube, you'll see it. Uh, if this is your first baby, if this is baby number two and up, then you know what I'm talking about. It's the lanolin in the tube. It works really good, but what I found really works for me and is also baby safe is regular coconut oil. Regular coconut oil keeps your nipples nice and um, hydrated especially through like the first two to three weeks so one two and three days after first having the baby you don't really feel anything but within that first week to the second week you really start to feel the chap nipples the pain it hurts breastfeeding hurts i'm telling you that now listen to me when i tell you sis breastfeeding does hurt but it goes away and it doesn't go away just because your nipples are hydrated. It just goes away simple because your body is adjusting. So your body is getting comfortable with the fact that, okay, you know what? This is going to be a consistent thing. This is going to always happen. So let's just adjust. It happens. If I can show you a before and after picture of my nipples before I had baby and after, you would be able to tell the difference. My nipples, of course, were darker while I was pregnant. And after they started to lighten, but only in the areas that he latched. Simply because he was stripping away that. And then my nipples were healing themselves and then now they're just a little bit lighter and then eventually they'll go back to the regular color but it does hurt and it goes away coconut oil perfect if you take a little bit of coconut oil let it harden put it in the freezer and then take that nugget if like a coconut oil nugget and rub it around your nipples it gives you cooling sensations it's very soothing and it gives your nipples the hydration that it needs and it's also baby safe so it won't harm him or her um there's also other alternatives like uh boob boobies it's it sounds like boobies like b-o-o-b-i-e-s but it's actually b-o-o-b-e-a-z-e -E. it's boobies get it like boobies and then boob ease um it comes in a do i have it in here do i have it in here i don't it's in my room crap okay um it comes in a black jar and it's it's the same company that makes the reusable uh um uh, nursing pads that I showed you guys in my my baby registry must-haves and that works really good as well it's softer it's a little silky and it really does hydrate I use that as well so coconut oil and the boob ease perfect if you can't get the boob ease coconut oil is like what a dollar 98 at Walmart in the cooking section 
boob ease i think is like five six or seven dollars one of those three depending on the retailer that you buy it from always try amazon of course that's what i always say um if you can hear me swallowing it's because my mouth is really dry uh that's also something with breastfeeding stay hydrated drink lots and lots and lots and lots of water always drink water if you feel like your production is really low drink juice so apple juice cranberry juice things like that that'll also keep you up um in the mornings what i eat to help thicken my milk throughout the day oatmeal love oatmeal oatmeal is such a good thing to eat it gives you the nutrients that you need as well as baby so baby is satisfied and you're satisfied as well it sticks to your stomach and it helps thicken your production um rice rice also helps as well so anything oat or grain like helps um if you decide to eat pasta eat whole wheat, whole wheat pasta that is really awesome for your production um and then of course your fruits and veggies and i don't drink milk because i'm lactose so i drink oat milk or almond milk those are good substitutes because they provide you the protein that you need and then they also again help thicken your milk the same way that of course oatmeal and rice do um the way i lost weight with breastfeeding is not just because i breastfeed so when you breastfeed you are really like ravenous when you're hungry, bro, you're hungry. The same way you were pregnant, like you're hungry. Like you need to eat now, right? But the benefits of that is being conscious and self-aware. Like, okay, the same way you're pregnant, what I put in my body is what my baby receives. So, okay, great example. Bomb example. You guys know the pack of noodles? Like whether it's the Michidan, the, the one, the like the chicken flavored and stuff like that. Or like the spicy one, the one with the, the chicken on it. You know, like the cartoon chicken. Y'all see it. If you go to 99 cents or stuff like that, you know what I'm talking about. It has like the chicken on it and stuff. It's real popular with the Japanese and, and the college kids, right? So what I do is I take a spaghetti squash. It sounds weird, but it's not that weird. If you go to the grocery store, they have spaghetti squash. I take a spaghetti squash. And I cook the spaghetti squash in the oven on 400, cover it in olive oil and a little bit of salt for about 45 minutes and let it soften really good. And then I take the spaghetti squash out. The reason why it's called spaghetti squash is because when you scrape it out of its shell, out of the skin, it looks like little strands of spaghetti. It's crazy. And what I do is... If it requires me to boil water, then do the seasoning. I actually put the spaghetti squash in there. Okay, first I boil the water with the seasoning. So now it's seasoning water. And I throw the spaghetti squash in real quick. And I let it sit for like another two minutes. And then I pour it in a bowl. And that's what I use instead of the noodles. I use the spaghetti squash. You can also use like zucchini noodles and stuff like that. But I take that, that processed noodle part out. And that actually cuts a lot of calories and it's more fulfilling and you get more nutrients because of the vegetable you're using. When I use the one with the little chicken on it, I don't have any of that stuff in here. I wish I could show you. I wish I'd have thought of this before I sat down to, y'all know how I get. You, if you know, you know what I'm talking about. So it's, it has a little chicken on it. And those usually like stir fry. It comes with like the little sauce packet. So you kind of put the sauce over it. And then you heat it up with the sauce on there. Those. I replace it with the, the spaghetti squash or the zucchini noodles. And it works exactly the same way. Except I'm not using the processed noodle. I remove it entirely. As far as rice. Yes, I do eat jasmine rice or regular like long grain rice but lately i've been eating bamboo rice bamboo rice is not actually rice from a bamboo shoot what it is is um like dead seedlings it sounds gross but it's not it tastes just like rice i promise it's really no difference it tastes just like rice it's just green but it's actually dead seedlings from sprout shoots and they dry it out and it's like I said, it's green. You can buy it at 
any uh, grocery retailer that carries them, if you look it up online, you can also find them. Bamboo rice, it has more nutrients in it than it than regular rice does and it's better for you and the cooking time and cooking measurements are really different but you can season it exactly the same way i promise you it tastes no listen to me when I, i'm telling you i promise you just because it's green it tastes no different than regular rice it tastes just like regular rice it's just green imagine rice and somebody put green food coloring in it rice that's what it is i eat that um i cut down on a lot of my sugars and processed foods i don't really eat fast food like that at all simply because i like to cook i enjoy cooking so if i crave a burrito bowl from chipotle but my ass is too lazy to get up and drive to chipotle i just make one in my kitchen same ingredients made at home less msg little bit better on the calorie side because i made it at home um let me think i'm thinking of all the things that help me lose weight oh oh my god i wish i would have brought this container in here um okay if you follow me on instagram my instagram is ivy's world it's underscore ivy's world ivy's is with two s's um and then world I'll post a picture and I'll put it up on there. I use something called boobies. That, that one is actually boobies, B-O-O-B-I-E-S. Um, oh no, I, I'll take that back. It's booby body. So it's B-O-O-B-I-E and then body. I use that. And I take a scoop of that and put it in my shaker bottle that I bought. I'll post all of this on my Instagram. If you follow me on my Instagram, I'll put it on there. I'll put my Instagram in the description box below as well. Um, I take one scoop of that and I take my almond milk and I shake it up in my bottle and then that's what I drink. So instead of snacking, sometimes I use that as a replacement for my snack. I also use that as a pre and post workout as well. Um, because sometimes I'm really bad at eating lunch. I'll eat breakfast and then I'll skip lunch entirely and then I'll eat dinner. And that's, of course, not good for baby because you need to eat. So I'll use that as a pre and post workout during my lunchtime periods. And then that helps him get the nutrients that he needs as well as keeping me full and keeping him satisfied and helping with my milk. Um, so again, I'll take a picture of the product that I use. I'll take it tomorrow morning after I'm done using it and I'll post it on my Instagram. Again, I'll put my Instagram in the description box below um and then let me think as well as with losing weight I do a lot of abdomen workouts so I have a 30 pound weight weight ball medicine ball um I do my Russian twists uh Russian twists is when you hold your body up in like a sit-up position but your legs are up off the floor in a crisscross position so you're like crutched and then you twist one two three and i do four sets of 15 so one two three four five six seven eight rest i rest for a minute then do my next set and then i rest for another minute do my next set and so on until i have my four sets i do that um i do my donkey kicks i do my reverse crunches um if you want me to do a workout video i'm more than happy to i don't mind it just let me know in the comments below. I don't, I really don't mind it at all. That's how I was able to um, lose my weight and my stomach actually shrunk more than what it was uh, two weeks postpartum till now. And then I'm hoping that it does decrease again. My body weight, I'm cool with it. I'm 210 pounds now. I was 230 when I had him. I gained 15 pounds while I was pregnant with him. So I lost the 15 pounds after I had him. Then I lost the additional five. There's my 20. Um, I might be less than that now, actually, because my pants have been fitting a little looser. I don't want to lose any part of my body. Let me tell you that right now. Boobs, love them. But after I had this baby, let me tell y'all my butt. I don't need no BBL. My butt is A1. All I want to do is shrink my stomach. That's all I want to do. Um, the rest of my body, I absolutely love it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Don't want to be skinny. Just, I love me. Like, I feel great. I just would like to shrink my stomach. 
I don't care about my stretch marks. Y'all, those, those are war wounds, okay? I'm proud of my stretch marks. I wouldn't replace them for the world, okay? That's just how I feel. But um, if you want me to do a workout video, I'm more than happy to just to show you what I do. That way I was able to uh, shrink my body because I was fluctuating between those 20 pounds for a cool little minute until I did figure out my workout routine as well as um, my breastfeeding uh, schedule with him. Oh boy, your hair is crazy right now. That's a dead head, baby. It's okay. Um, what else? Eat right, exercise, drink a lot of water. Positions where breastfeeding make you and baby comfortable are always super important. And then making sure that you're always okay. And I mean that mentally because stress actually does affect your supply. Very much so. So if you feel like you're in a stressful state, then your breast milk your your breast milk production will become stressful for your body and if you take your time and make sure that you're pumping accurately don't this is where i messed up and i did this when i had my daughter and i learned my lesson when i had him if you okay you see how he's on my left side so if you just nursed on your left side and you switch baby over to the right because they're still hungry and you decide, okay, well, while they're on the right, I'm going to nurse on my, I'm going to pump on my left. That's cool. But don't expect your, your outcome to be as much as you think it's going to be. Like, let's say he didn't eat just now and I pumped during this video. On this side, I'd have pumped about four ounces. My baby eats a lot. Okay. I'd have pumped maybe four to five ounces on just one side. And then again, four to five ounces on the other side. But since he ate, if I turned him over and switched him onto this side and decided to bump this side, I'm only going to get maybe about two ounces to two and a half ounces on this side because he just ate from this side. So what the pump is doing is it's telling my body that, okay, baby's eating again. Let's try to produce something so that baby can eat. Not everything, but something so that he can at least eat that's what your body is going to do it's never going to produce twice as much or the same amount it's just going to produce enough so that baby is at least some type of satisfied and they're not like crazy hungry um if you continue to do that then eventually yes your milk supply will increase but it takes time and never just happens out of nowhere that takes time i've learned that please do not beat yourself up over that, mama. It is not that serious. If your baby is strictly breastfed, my baby is strictly breastfed. I do pump. I put them in the freezer um, just so my husband can have something. If I decide to step out to go to the store and he wants to watch the kids, something like that. But my son does not take bottles at all. He don't bottle feed. Dude don't even take a pacifier. He is not that kind of, this is a different breed of baby right here. It's a whole nother set of baby right here. Okay. He don't do that. And that's just that. So if other moms can pump and, and bottle feed, that's cool. Don't beat yourself up about it. Every baby's different. Every mom's circumstances are different. So recognize your limits understand your capabilities and then do what makes you comfortable so recap bobby cool support system around bobby even better no bobby pillow works just the same eat oatmeal keep up with your protein drink lots of water lots of water stay hydrated your baby's hydration comes from you so if you're dehydrated baby's dehydrated always remember that okay um coconut oil coconut oil in the freezer take the little nugget from the coconut oil rub that around works just fine boob ease works just fine booby body also a supplemental meal supplement 
um, for breastfeeding and pregnant and um, just regular moms. I will post that picture in my Instagram so that you can see the system that I use. And then time, no stress, be relaxed, be comfortable, be happy, and understand your body. As long as you understand your body, as long as you understand how you work, you and baby will work just fine. You're beautiful, you're strong, you're capable. You may be tired, or you may look beat up like a girl over here, you know, but it's okay. You're okay. We're okay. They're okay. So just always remember that. And if you have any more questions on how it is that I manage to be up at late hours, what my diaper changing schedules are, my cloth diapering video, I swear to you, it is coming. My diapers are in route. They're coming. I still have to do my pre-wash and my wash setup. I have to strip them, make sure they're right, but they're coming. I'm so excited to share because um, women of color, no discriminatory, I promise you, my mother, white woman, that is no cap, I promise you, but women of color do cloth diaper. So that is coming. I, I mean, I really would like to put a lot of people onto that because the money that you spend on literally your child shitting your money away excuse my language but that just makes no sense i'm sorry after I had my daughter i sat down and thought it to myself like really i'm gonna let you shit in the dollar that i just made to throw it in the trash i'm cool i'm not doing that no more no that's out so cloth diapering women of color do do that please don't sell yourself short you are capable of doing anything i promise you you are so strong just in general women are strong we are goddesses okay black white yellow orange purple blue green i don't care what color you are girl we are strong girl we are strong i'm so proud of us as moms i'm so proud of us as women I'm so proud of my, my subscribers. I'm so proud of the, the situation that we're in as women. I'm just, I'm proud. I'm proud. I, I am. I can't, I just can't. Like, I'm just proud. Like, y'all are, y'all are queens. And I love it. I love it. I do. So those are my breastfeeding tips. Those are my breastfeeding hacks. Those are things that you can use and hopefully they are beneficial to you. And then of course, any other position that you feel like you're comfortable in. Um, sometimes when I'm walking around the house and I'm, I have stuff to do, of course I can't sit down and he's hungry. I do hold him in my arms, whip it out and I feed it to him while I'm holding him. I do that too. It's anything that makes you comfortable or you feel is easier for you, then you do it. Don't feel like you're doing it wrong. There is no right and wrong way. Oh, except for when they latch wrong and you'll feel that. I, there's no way I can describe it to you, but when they latch incorrectly, you'll feel it. And what you do is you take your pinky. I ain't got my nails done, by the way, so it's a lot easier. You take your pinky and you this is their mouth okay i'll show you that's their mouth right and they're latched onto your nipple if they're latched incorrectly what you do is you take your pinky and you stick it in the corner of their mouth and very gently kind of just nudge it in there and they'll break away and then you have them relatch and it, let me tell you something bomb because if they latch incorrectly and then they start feeding they're gonna get their milk either way so at that point it's up to your comfortable your comfortability because tell you something when they latch wrong it hurts so pinky mouth corner of their mouth edge always the edge of their mouth never stick it directly in the middle because that'll hurt you and them um especially like the upper the roof of their mouth or even if you put it at the bottom their tongue you don't want to do that because you know you don't want to hurt your baby of course um so take your pinky corner of their mouth gently stick it in and it'll they'll un they'll unlatch 
and then just have them relatch and then that's perfectly fine but other than that those are all the breastfeeding hacks that you need you don't need anything else uh, you're doing amazing you're doing great keep doing this sis because <laughs> you're doing it okay i'll see you i'll see you do you see you because i'll see you all right i'm gonna put little man to bed um i might come back on here tomorrow evening just to have like a little chat it's specifically for moms not anything to do with baby just moms in general um i feel like it's time that we have a little chat especially about postpartum and i do want to explain to you guys about how postpartum works because if you can see like y'all lucky i love y'all because i would not be showing nobody this up close but you see that it's like a balding area it's not really bald it is more thin than it is bald but i am gonna um it'll grow back i ain't tripping my husband let me anyway so that's that but i do want to talk to you guys about postpartum and what to expect postpartum that way you're not freaking out and thinking something's wrong with you nothing's wrong with you you're fine you'll live you just had a baby that's it okay other than that um stay beautiful stay positive stay kind be a mom be proud i love you guys okay all right i'm gonna lay him down because now it's me time <laughs> good night